All right, you guys. So last or this morning, I guess I got um, a question today on uh, this kind of starting position uh, where you know where one person's on our knees, the other person uh, is doing something else, right? And so if we're looking at you know just home wrestling or wrestling in the gym, um, but not necessarily like competing, so we're not starting standing. Um, you know, people are usually going to start here, which means that they're playing guard, right? They're, they're going to be here or here, because they don't know what they're doing. Um, they could be here, but again, guys, this is not very mobile, right? I'm not gonna be able to move particularly fast here. Um, I could be in a combat base, that's gonna be a lot more likely and a lot more effective, um, or I could be standing. And the point was, was that, um, you know, if we're here, um, and this was kind of what he was asking about, was, you know, um, and, and I'm not 100% clear on what exactly was going on, but it sounds like, you know, he's just in this position with no connection. And despite what I said, he, people were running around on him and being able to pass his guard from this position, despite what I said. And the thing is about that is that you're probably not active. So start using, you know, these pushes, right? I can create space by scooching away. I can come in by digging in. I can follow. And if you think about it, the reason why I can follow faster than the person on the outside because my circle that I'm running around on my butt, which is just on one cheek, um, is about that big, right? My leg circle is about that big and the circle that somebody else has to be able to do is basically from my toe to, to here, right? Um, that they have to run around. So as far as like the diameter goes. Um, so they have a much bigger distance that they have to travel uh, and nobody can run fast enough to be able to pass their, your guard that way. So um, if people are doing that, it means that you're not being mobile enough. And it could be that you know, you're know you here and you got both ass cheeks on the ground. And that is a kind of a big no-no there, right? Because um, you know when we want to move on the mat, right? If I'm trying to shrimp and I'm here, I've got so much connection on the ground that I'm not going to be able to move very fast, right? If I'm playing guard and I want to be able to um, go for an arm bar or a triangle and I need to cut an angle, right? Right? You see, I, I, I've minimized my connection to the mat. So when I try to keep a single point on the mat, um, that's where I start becoming mobile. So when I'm in this... Um, open guard position, I've got one ass cheek on the ground. I don't have two. Um, this is a push. This is very light, right? I'm not putting any weight on this guy, right? So, you know, I can pick this up. Doesn't, doesn't change much. It's just down because my weight is forward here because I don't want to get knocked down particularly easily. And that's another thing, right? If you are here and you feel like, okay, people are pulling you down too much, it's because you don't have your post out. Right? If you're getting pushed back, it's because you're sitting back too much, right? You need to have your shoulders in front of your hips if you want to prevent somebody from being able to just push you back as easily. Got a post, got a post, and I'm able to move and I'm able to follow and I'm being very light about that. And that's something you can go ahead and practice, right? Is practice getting here. If somebody's like kicking at you, I can start working on my technical rises from this position, right? I can work on scooching and scooching out. So you can work on those mobility things, but again, if you are playing a guard position, um, it's you don't have any advantage unless you have connection. And that's, you know, if somebody's trying to pass my guard um, and get to a side control position from here, you know, if the, the problem is, is that I'm able to follow, the answer is I need to stop you from being able to follow, okay? So what I mean by that is if somebody is, you know, let's say I'm starting out here on my knees, right? Um, and somebody's in that position, um, and I want to just kind of run around to, to the side here, right? I can't just, you know, get up and start, start to run around or, you know, do this sort of thing because again, they, they can follow. But if I put two hands on the shin that's down, I stack my weight into it and I start to move around, right? They can't follow me anymore because I'm holding that shin in place. If, um, if I didn't want to do that, if I wanted to have more structure, maybe I wanted to have this hand free, start getting head control or something, um, I could be in this position, right? And I can take this hand up and put it right here 
So it's right here between my hip, my belly, my hip, and my thigh, right? And it's gonna block me from being able to follow, right? So if I'm here, block, shuffle around, get head control, right? If they're putting their arms out to kind of block you from doing that, you might be able to get an underhook here to hook the shoulder. You can might be able to go over the top. You might even actually be able to pull that arm because I've got a pivot point here and I can pull them down to me rather than trying to continue around and get that head control. I can use that block to kind of direct them down onto their back. Um, so that's kind of the thing about the legs is, is that I need to be able to stop them from being able to follow me. So if I am in this uh, position and let's say that um, I, I've got that leg down or I've got that block, right? And I start to come around and they put their hands on my hip and they're starting to lay down. So, you know, they realize that they're not going to be able to you know, stop me from uh, starting to come around because they pin this down. They might get onto their side here so that they can start to shrimp, for example. Um, they might do this so that they have some structure so that they can block that hip. Um, and there are things I can do with that, but you know, if I'm coming around and somebody's blocking my hip here and they're, they're now on their side, I can keep pressuring in. I'm gonna take this hand, go across to the other side of their hip, right? So if I'm here and I'm blocking, I'm gonna put that hand over here behind my butt here, okay? So I'm starting to pass. I put the hand that's on their shoulder side, right? I'm gonna put it on the mat here. I'm gonna keep pressuring into their hands. If they uh, collapse their hands down, well, fine, I'm just gonna sink into side control here, right? Or into a reverse side control and I can start working towards the mount. But if they have that structure and they don't collapse, all I have to do is start to push into them so they start to lift my hip, and then from there, they will carry me around to the side and they can get head control over here. They're not gonna be able to block it because the, both their hands were occupied holding me up. This hand here that was down by the hip is gonna stop them from being able to turn into me and put their legs back underneath me to pull me back into the guard, and then I can start to sink down and I can start establishing that side control. So there's your flagpole pass from there. Um, so that's one way that we can do it, is we can start thinking about controlling their hips to stop them from, um, from being able to pre prevent me from coming in. Um, the other thing is that if I'm here, right, uh, one thing I could be looking for, right, is I can take my head and I can kind of, um, I can put it into their hip pocket, right? So if I'm here, I'm gonna start to put my head up here on this hip, okay? Um, I have to think about that, like I'm gonna be actually pressing my head into their belly more, more so. And so what I'm gonna do is that as I'm coming in, I'm going over this leg, right, the one that was down, and I'm going to overhook that from this side, and I'm gonna hold on to their ankle underneath here, right? So I'm holding that to their body so that they can't straighten out that leg again. This leg, because it's up and forward, I've got an easy access under here. So. I come up and over and I hook onto their leg and I thread my hand through so I've got this kind of grip here. Now I've got two options and I believe I covered this in the last video, right? I can sprawl up and walk around, right? And then, you know, pass this, take this out and establish head control. If that doesn't work, I can start to stack them with this arm, right? So I wouldn't be posting here, I'm actually gonna be using their body to create the third point to this uh, tripod here, right? And I'm gonna stack them onto the mat, look off that leg, and I'm gonna land into this reverse switch base, right? So that over under pass is right there, presented to you quite well. Um, so, right, so what we're trying to get into here, right, is that I'm can be using this grip that's holding this shin in so that I can pass around this side. So it's acting as that block did, right? Or I can start, which kills the hips. If um, I start to lift this leg up and I get them up here and I'm starting to stack them up and look off, I'm gluing the shoulders to the mat, which is the second way they're gonna be able to pass. So control the hips, control the shoulder. So then look that up and then you land into this uh, reverse switch base position. Um, so that is going to be the next step to this. So, 
if I wanted to, you know, if somebody's in this position, I could start to stand up and I can grab really either one of the legs. It doesn't matter that much, whichever one you find to be relatively easiest. But, you know, if you can grab both, that's great too. And from there, you're gonna pull them up to you so that the shoulders slide towards you and the butt's way up in the air. And now you're right here, right? You're gluing their shoulders into the mat. And really, if you wanted to, you could just drop one leg, grab, start to guide the other one down and come into a knee ride position. Or, you know, if I am controlling this way, I can step through, right? Come down, start working on that side mount position. If they flatten back out, great. I'm gonna go into a regular mount position, right? Um, it depends on what they do to a certain extent, right? So control the hips or control the shoulders gonna be the, uh, your options there. Um, another way they can do it, right? If I get both those legs up, right? I could pass both legs to the side so that one threads over my hip here. I'm gonna grab the knee of that leg, it's the only one that matters now, and I'm gonna hold it in, and I'm gonna squat down in because you're putting pressure on the lower hamstring there. Now I can start to turn the corner, grab for head control, put my hand down here or onto the other side and suck them in and go into a side control position from there, All right? I could, um, if I wanted to, I could actually cartwheel through this, right? So they're in this, combat pace position, right? And I can start to crowd in. Maybe I get that unhook, I put my head here, my other hand by their hip, and from here I could come up and slide up. Now if they can, right, if I can get this over under here, I can put my head onto the mat and just hop over that if I wanted to, right? If um, maybe I don't got as good of a grip onto that leg, Right? I can put my head on this side and put my feet on the other side. Right? It's gonna be easier if I can use the, the punching pack for this one. Which I, I showed you this one before, right? So, if I'm tr struggling to get that ankle here, right? But I've got that underhook. Um, so from here, I'm gonna put it onto this side, right? So I have to think through that. And so the, now my legs, are going to go onto that side, right? So I'm here, and from here, I tend to prefer to turn towards the legs, and then settle down here into the side control. So I'm using that kind of back flip um, to get there. So, we are either going to control the hips, we're going to control the shoulders, we're going to either go over, we're going to go under, um, we can still get that knee cut too, right? So, you know, if I am, here and I'm standing and they're in that uh, kind of open guard um, semi combat base. I could step into that guard, be, being mindful of that daily healer, right? They can just lay back and hook under here and put their foot up. Um, but even if that's the case, right, um, I can start, if I can keep enough pressure in with my knee, maybe I can start to work on that knee cut, right, and start to come across. If they do get their leg, over here and hooking down, I can press that down and I can still go for that knee cut. It's still there, right? Um, if they do get into that daily heel position and they do get that hook there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on to that leg and I'm going to hold on to the angle on this side and I'm going to pull it through as I do a back step, right? And so from here, I'm going to lay back, I'm going to put my feet together, right? Just like that. So that I'm blocking their hips. Um, and I've got their leg now here because it was hooking here and I've been able to pull it through. Now from here, I can do a couple things, right? I could um, get to this position. I think I've got that backwards, right? So I'm holding onto the ankle, I'm holding it close to my body. I've got my uh, arm triangled over and I can start to look and and that will cause, uh, that's a knee bar there. If I wanted to, I could thread under and feed it into my armpit here and go here as well. So there are, um, and that would be on the top side of our bit. So there's a knee bar there if you're if they do fall back and they go into that uh, De La Hiva position. So, you know, um, long story short, and I know that this is once again becoming an absurdly long video, um, when we're looking at this opening position um, and you're feeling like, okay, this guard is getting passed all the time, and 
granted, you know, if somebody's starting to come across and they're starting to, they've got this pinned down, maybe they throw this leg in front, right? Now they have to change directions and they might not have as good control when they, when they do, right? So I can, if they pressure this one down so they can come around this way, right? I can turn and I can start to create my frame here by digging my foot under and turning like that. So if you're finding that, you know, you're getting into this position and you're getting past a lot, you know, start thinking about, okay, what is my connection? How am I preventing them from being able to come around, right? Um, and how can I start uh, to establish a good guard game here, right? And I think I did another take of this video and I think I covered that already in that one. But uh, since I'm not using it, I'll go ahead and do it here as well. So we talked about, you know, how can you start to break down and how can you start to pass the guard? And I think when we're talking about guard retention, um, the most important thing that you can know is how your guard's going to get passed, right? And when you're trying to learn how to pass guard, the best way that you're going to ensure that you can actually pass that guard is how is the uh, person going to stop you from passing the guard, right? So understanding both processes is what's going to make you better at playing these games. So if somebody is, um, you're feeling like your guard is completely constantly getting passed when you're playing this card. Um, my first thing I'm going to tell you is that um, you're allowing people to get the grips that they want to get, right? So if somebody's starting to reach for this thigh, this uh, shin to keep it pinned to the ground, I'm not going to let them have it. I'm going to keep some distance there, right? If they if they do, right, I might use that to, to my advantage. So if somebody does get a grip onto my ankle here, I, you know, I might hold onto the wrist to keep it in place as I start to move my shin back, right? So now I've got that wrist control, and from here I could bend it over my shin, and now I've got this kind of uh, weird, uh, I guess this would, would still be like a half butterfly guard. Uh, from here, you know, I might be able to get my foot hooked. This is a push, it could be a pull here, right? Um, if somebody is uh, in, you know, this type of position, I might be looking for getting a hook underneath the high leg and I, maybe I'll hold on to a wrist, maybe I'll start going for an ankle, maybe on the, uh, when I get this hook in, I lift up and I'm going to grab onto this angle. That's going to be really, really good control here, right? So from here, now I've got control of half his body. He's not going to be able to continue this pass. He's going to have to maybe stand up and start to work on clearing this hook. Um, maybe he needs to clear this foot grip, so he's going to have to stand to be able to do that. And, in, and the moment he stands, maybe I'll get into this X guard position that we've talked about, right? So the top leg, uh, knee goes back, foot is in front. If it's the other way around, it's gonna be easy for them to break that down. They're gonna just push that leg across. So it has to be uh, top foot to uh, the back, right? Um, so, you know, I can get into this X guard position. That would be a good position to get to from here. Um, depending on what they what they give me. If, if they're just sitting, you know, here like this, I'm going to pull them into a regular guard, right? So if I'm here, it's like, okay, um, you know, maybe I'm going to get an arm grip or an elbow grip, rather, or a head grip, um, and I'm just going to sit through and go into a closed guard. That's right there. Um, so you need to start thinking about, okay, how are they going to pass? Are they going to come over my legs? Are they going to try to come under my legs? Are they going to try to come around? In order for them to do that, they need to get some kind of type of connection. They need to get some kind of control. Um, so how can I exploit that, right? If they get double unders here, right? Um, I can break down their posture by pulling them this way, right? Hell, I can even hold onto their wrists so that they can't even, so they can't get out from that, right? And waddle, 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 waddle back. Um, from there, maybe I can get this leg out. Um, and then I'm in perfect position for a triangle if I wanted to. Um, so pick it apart. Um, start thinking about, you know, especially, especially if you are rolling, uh, in the Jesus school on the regular, um, and you're finding that you're getting passed from that position. Um, and again, you know, if, if people are doing it a, a dozen different ways, lock onto one way that they're doing that today. Okay. Um, and be like, okay, what did they do in order to make that pass happen that time? And, you know, if you do a round and, you know, they pass your guard, when is this type of guard, um, five different ways, 
Um, don't try to remember all five. Try to remember one way that they did it and start to pick that apart and start to think about, okay, what were the mechanics that made that hard pass possible? And then um, start to establish, okay, how am I going to address that situation when it comes again? And then if you remember a second way that they did it, pick that apart as well. So try to break it down to all the different types of um, guard passes that people have done and have started to actually successfully pass you and um, find out why it was that they were successful and then try to figure out how you're going to stop that from happening in the future. And I know that sounds probably pretty basic and uh, you no know, duh, but that's, that's how all jujitsu uh, and all of submission wrestling and all of regular wrestling uh, is done is because people were doing something and people stopped and they thought, okay, how do I stop that thing? And, I, and so I don't know how helpful that little nugget of wisdom really is because it, it seems glaringly obvious, but um, you know, a lot of times I find that um, when I talk to people who are who are newer to it, and uh, including uh, Jet, um, we had that conversation the other day, where um, he's like, "Well, what are you? How do I remember how to do something when I'm rolling?" And that's um, Maybe I'm, I'll go ahead and do that on a separate video here. So um, pick that apart and then um, I'll go ahead and do this throughout the next video here.